Okay. Right. I just want to read from um, uh, Romans chapter 8. Okay. Um, Romans chapter 8 and um, verse 15 and verses 15 and 16. Right? It says, um, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we also, that we may also be glorified together, um, glorified together. Right. So it says that, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit's work in our heart, in our life, it says you did not receive a spirit of bondage. Right. So who is the Holy Spirit? Just the opposite of that. Uh, he's the spirit of liberty. Uh, he's the spirit of truth. So we know that when we say a spirit of bondage, you know, when we give a name like that, it leads into uh, prison-like situations. Right? It leads to imprisonment. But this Holy Spirit, He is a spirit of liberty. And because the scripture talks about how where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So that you can expect liberty and freedom in our spirit, in our life, with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then He, all, he says that um, He's a spirit of adoption uh, by whom we cry out, Abba Father. Right? He brings us to that, He gives us that reassurance um, in our heart. No one needs to reason and give any logic and reason and uh, you know great theological input to say that you are child of god right you know deep within because of the work of the holy spirit and it says here the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god right so there is a, a transfer of a revelation there is a transfer of information right from the heart of god from the Spirit of God to our spirit, and um, that is something that uh, you know that we need to welcome. Right, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Now, even as we go through life and uh, and just welcome and invite the Holy Spirit to bear witness with our spirit. Here it talks about how He bears witness with our spirit to say that we are children of God, but the Holy Spirit can bear witness in many other things as well. Right, He can give that that proof or the confidence or the reassurance bearing witness with our spirit right so um so the, today i just thought you know we could just pray and say invite the holy spirit and say lord you bear witness with my spirit right on all those things that i need to understand all those things that i need to receive uh things that are shaky and things that need to be strengthened holy spirit you bear witness with my spirit right Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that, um, Lord, uh, Spirit of God, that you are the Spirit of uh, where you are. There is uh, freedom, liberty, you're the Spirit of truth, Spirit of revelation and wisdom. You are the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are here to teach and guide and lead us into all truth. And Lord, today we ask, Lord, that you would bear witness with our spirit, Father God, that you would bear witness in our hearts, Father God, that, um, yeah, yeah uh, that we are heirs and uh, children of God and uh, Lord in all other areas that we need that reassurance today in all other areas of our life Lord that we where we need that uh, that uh, uh, that revelation Father God and Spirit of God we invite you we, you speak to our hearts and let there be an impartation today we thank you Lord in Jesus matchless name we pray Amen 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 okay Okay, where did we stop? Uh, I think we kind of cancelled two classes. We had to uh, developing leaders. So we looked at uh, um, what to look for, right? We looked at some of those attributes. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we look at these attributes, it seems like a very long list. And uh, sometimes we wonder, you know, will we find anyone who will fit all these things? Will have all these characters? Um, uh, but uh, it's it's a good checklist for us to have to see if you know if, if people are in varying degrees of development in this, right? So certain things like okay, uh, maybe they're not good nurturers. Or they're not, you know, at, at least some percentage 
or they have a heart for it they don't know how maybe right it's good to have that um it's good to see that and then raise leaders and also this list serves for us also as a checklist you know do i see these qualities in me right or do i see something of this uh, which is not there I, do i see the opposite of this uh, in my life right uh, am i aligned to the vision of the place where i'm ministering you know is my life a personal example uh, do i have spiritual and emotional maturity you know am i responsible right uh, you know would i appoint myself as a leader would i take myself as a leader in my team right if i were to come and uh, you know approach me uh, would i take myself as a leader right if not why you know what, what are those characteristics which are missing and which uh, which need to be developed okay um okay so let, let's look at um, the uh, the whole process of nurturing leaders okay now if we can say okay um this is a process now we see these qualities and you know is there a timeline and is there a process okay so we can uh, de i mean we can kind of divide that into several stages one is the preparation stage okay so the preparation stage is when one is sharing the vision if you are raising up a leader you are sharing the vision right sharing the big picture okay this is what we are doing as a ministry as a church as a as a team this is what we are doing this is how we are going to do um do these things you know you are sharing the values you are sharing the culture and all that you are taking time to do this you know many times what happens is we give the person the job go get this done okay do you have the tools for it yeah go get it done and uh, very little of this the big picture right what is the vision why are we doing this right uh, very little time is also spent in doing this you know of course it differs from role to role but uh, when we uh, you know when we share that vision then the person understands this is why i am doing it right so there's there won't be any unnecessary correction um, the person understands it and 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 goes about doing it right so we're also emphasizing character responsibility and other things right uh, that we expect so uh, integrity and all those things right so this is the preparation stage um and uh, it's important that we do this while we raise leaders okay then uh, what we could call as the initial stage in the sense you see that the person is um, got some skills got the right attributes there and then we give them the opportunity to step into a role as a leader okay so uh, here's the opportunity you do it and uh, of course we have provided whatever guidance whatever training whatever equipping we um, you know we have done that at the same time we are also involved in continuing to provide that okay so uh, the involvement is there you know uh, so practically how would we do this you know maybe it can be like a like a feedback session right okay how was your day make like a debriefing right how was your day how did it go about so you you want to understand you are observing from a distance but at the same time you are also you know uh, interacting and receiving okay this is how it was done this is how you know i did it and these are some mistakes and so on so there's continuous guidance training uh, equipping etc right um this is also a time when maybe there is an expansion of the team okay because this person is raising up as a leader and as a leader they are going to oversee some some people so we help them help the leader or the potential leader to put together a team i find others who can work alongside okay so because you as a as a leader will be able to spot others who have these qualities so you bring them and you see how you can you know uh, form the team so that this person can lead the team right um now you know we're going to learn about teamwork that is a third section right but um, we need to understand that um, within the team there will be certain dynamics like there will be initial stage of learning to work together maybe an uncomfortable stage uh, maybe some you know some human uh, 
conflicts personality wise and so on it but they will learn to work together they learn to resolve these things and also you know you are there to provide the guidance right okay this is something that that should not be done okay, this is something that we don't value okay so you're able to provide that um then there is a settling in stage right settling in um it means that the leader starts functioning confidently they are carrying out their role they're carrying out their responsibility and they're able to make their own decisions for the team right they are they've reached a level of uh, expertise and so then we can actually disengage we, we don't have to be so involved right we don't have to be involved in the day to day we can disengage and continue to give input continue to receive feedback maybe it can be a weekly thing maybe it can be a monthly thing where we sit and talk and see okay how things are review things and share where they can make changes and so on right so this is a settling in stage right then the growth stage where a leader is you know functioning well the team is functioning well and they grow okay so the the, the work is productive it is not where it used to be it has grown to another level okay so that the leader is able to take it to another level so here also as people who have raised up a leader we are providing uh, again uh, a vision for the next level it's a high level vision We're not getting involved in the minute things right minute operational things or decisions okay um, but again you know it it means that the person has grown to display certain things where you have the confidence right so you can release them to do that okay maturity stage maturity stage is when the leader whom you have raised up is capable of raising up and is also raising up other leaders right um delegating um uh, other responsibilities so so the leader whom you raised up is raising up other leaders right and the thing is most often whatever method you used you know whatever learnings you imparted now those are the ones that it's going to be passed on right so we need to be careful what is it that i'm you know uh, what what is it that i'm giving as input because that's going to be passed on that's going to be affecting the next level next generation of leaders right so uh, you be mindful of that okay so um so uh, then again a transition stage where maybe the leader has become you know is it, kind of uh, reached a plateau in their role and uh, we can actually help them move into a next stage maybe a new ministry new role because they have raised up a lot of leaders right and to fit in that and then the team is functioning well so want to switch on the fan yeah, so um and so maybe a transition stage could be that where you you know uh, let someone else take their from the team itself take the present role that they're doing so that this person can be moved to a much bigger uh, role with a bigger scope bigger responsibility and so on okay so this is a, a simple uh, yeah yeah the growth stage in the future they can uh, take their own uh, i mean like not a ministry maybe they can change any the way of doing yeah. like what they feel right. they, they they can work like that yeah so the thing is the uh, you know um, so which means it's always for the better betterment of the church and ministry um maybe they are doing some innovation and something which improves the whole process uh, there's better fruit right uh fruitfulness productivity everything is increases so yes definitely but there's no change in the vision there's no change in the vision there's no compromise on the values there's no you know dilution of integrity or all those attributes which you are holding you know so that's the thing if the if the the pastor who who founded the church and all he have a he have a different vision so the the person who is emerging as a new leaders in the future generation what if they they get a different vision of i mean taking the ministry into a, another way is is that okay or or yeah. 
so the thing is uh, i get what you're saying okay um, maybe you know let's say for example you know this person whom this pastor has raised up uh, suddenly he feels that hey we're not doing enough social work okay we've reached a place i think we're doing church planting etc but we need to you know we need to branch out we need to start an orphanage we need to start a school we need to start a hospital we need to start a college okay so that now this this pastor the senior pastor doesn't have any of that he just wants to disciple people raise them up release them into ministry and so kind of thing but then this pastor you know feels this way so the thing is this to have a uh you know to have a discussion to see is there something that we want to do we'd like to do uh to pray about it and yeah if if it's fine just go ahead and do it yeah so it need not be a point of conflict it can actually uh, yeah it yeah it's a it's a you know it's a, like a bigger thing the scope and influence is going to be much bigger wider uh, it's going to be take on a lot of efforts uh, maybe this pastor has the exp- expertise right so to do that and and the vision to carry it out as well and the gifting so yeah so it can be something that can be uh, agreed upon and uh, focused yeah so that can be done okay um so it's a very exciting you know process of oops uh, of uh, sorry of raising leaders and it's a very satisfying um deeply you know um satisfying uh thing to see people come into their place of destiny right discover their calling and step into their uh calling and purpose and and uh, and you know live out their destiny for them so it's it can be a very satisfying thing but it's also we know that you know things may not always go right okay like we see even in paul's case we see that you know there were certain people uh, he says demas has forsaken you know he has loved this present world and uh, you know people who were part of the team who who actually you know uh, kind of left halfway and so on so it can be disappointing it can be uh, painful as well but uh, at the same time it's exciting and very um, you know satisfying to see people discover the call uh, and pursue god's call on their lives right okay um creating opportunities for development uh, develops leaders okay so when we create opportunities for people to lead um that actually really uh, hastens their leadership development okay so why do we hesitate to put put people in a place of leadership because we feel okay maybe they will not deliver right uh we see some faults in them and then maybe we feel maybe they will not deliver maybe they will not do the job as good as i used to do or i have done so far and i don't want every them to pull it back from where it where we actually raised up right we don't want to we've come to level 5 we don't want to go back to level 1 right but the thing is uh, when we raise up leaders in the right way okay um making sure that they are able to carry the load making sure that they are skilled making sure that they are developing their skill and gifting and at the same time they are equipped and they have the equipment or the tools to get the job done right so um when we create opportunities and we place them in uh, positions of leadership uh, they will thrive and um, and they will you know do really well right okay um feedback encouragement and correction okay now this is something that is very important like even as we go through that you know the, that those stages of leadership um we should not hesitate to share feedback okay now not all feedback is good okay If not all feedback is like oh fantastic job you know you've done a great job it is good not all feedback is good some feedback could be hey you could have done better some feedback could be today was very bad okay so uh, the thing is uh, but that feedback should be shared 
that truth should be spoken in love and should be uh, communicated in a gracious manner right in an honorable manner so that the person is not broken you know the dignity of that person is not removed or anything but you you are able to share okay you share what needs to be done you share this is what happened okay so um so which means if if we can have a culture of sharing feedback encouragement correction okay um so when we know the what is the heart of it why are we sharing it is it to you know constantly find mistakes no it, it's so that the person can be better it is so that the the department the team the ministry can be better right so when that is done then um then you know it's it develops the leaders develops strength in uh, leaders so what do you think is it um, is it easy sharing feedback ah huh? depends upon the person to whom you are sharing feedback is it why hmm Mm. So we have uh, a feedback of correction or a negative feedback is always difficult, right? Uh, because you, uh, you know. But the thing is, um, no matter how sugar, you know, how how well you share it, people will get hurt, right? Because you are actually talking about their performance, something that was not done right. So when it, when there's correction, when there's negative feedback. there is a very highly likely that people will get hurt so we need to be aware of that you know we can't be saying okay the person will not get hurt anyway we well, okay this is going to hurt the person may not take it well but i have to do it anyway uh, as a leader i have to do it right so many times uh, what happens is like somebody said you know we share 80% of the feedback okay 80% of what we actually need to do and then that 20% we hold back okay uh, thinking that okay if i share this maybe you know it's okay i let it slip it's fine the 20% i don't share and that 20% is what really matters and that 20% which you held back is what really matters for that person to change right so yeah so sometimes we feel okay maybe i should not share this you know i'm just holding it back no share that but share it in the best way possible you know some people have the uh, ability to share it graciously uh, maybe we need some of us need to learn it but um, we need to do that right this will really help develop leaders okay um yeah so when we have a culture of leaders developing leaders um, you know it really multiplies the process the nurturing process um, or uh, the leaders being developed in a in an organization in a church okay so so it's it should be a you know it should be a it, it's it's a great place nurturing place it's a great culture nurturing culture when we have leaders who are developing other leaders right you see somebody and they are encouraging and they saying hey why don't you do this and uh, that person you know pretty soon uh, maybe a few weeks down the line you see that person taking up and being passionate about that uh, you know they're carrying the load so it's a, it's a very wonderful it's a very thriving place when you have that nurturing culture okay so we should always um, be an example and also um, encourage that encourage that kind of culture intentionally okay right? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is uh, about decision making. Okay, decision making within, let's say, an organization. Okay. So we're looking at uh, how we need to. We looked at how we need to organize uh, people, resources, time, etc. Now, when it comes to an organization, when it comes to a department, a ministry, decisions need to be made. right so what kind of decisions generally will a like a let's say a bible college what kind of decisions would have to be made 
what do you think how to do the schedule schedule of the college okay that's a decision okay so what um what is the timetable what are the subjects who's teaching what yeah standards meaning hmm okay so discipline guidelines uh, for the students for the staff right okay what other like decisions would require would be required mm -hmm. ah sorry Say it, say it. Use the mic. <laughs> Just give <him> the mic. <laughs> mm. For our students, like, uh, for example, like, if they are doing something wrong, okay. uh, I can't say punishment, but like, uh, like the consequences of the students. So the whole disciplinary process. Yeah. This is a standard. Mm. So obviously, if those standards are not met, there will be consequences. Mm. So, you know, so that that particular is okay. So this is the consequence. So the thing is, you know, there are a lot of decisions, okay, right from operational decisions, staffing decisions, right from the menu, vendor, you know, a lot of decisions in an organization. So the thing is, now for each of these decisions, if you are the senior most person in the organization, for each of these decisions, you know, the tendency is, okay, I'll ask the senior most person, right? Uh, okay, I'll ask what he thinks, I'll ask what she thinks. Right? Why are you asking? Because you want, you, you have to make a decision, but you are asking for the approval, right? I want, okay, sh can I go ahead? Can I go ahead and buy? Can I, because I need to get my money reimbursed. You know, I'm paying with my money. I'm get, buying something. Can I go ahead and do it, etc. So you're looking for approval, right? So one thing that we need to put in place is the within the organization, if so many decisions, the countless decisions, so the whole process of how those decisions can be made. Okay. So the first thing is the standards. Okay, what are the standards for making a decision? Okay, let's say, for example, if you need to put out a video, okay, a video of somebody's message, okay, church Sunday sermon, video we need to put out. Okay, so what is the standard? Quality standard, you know, how should it be? What is the design standard? Everything, you know, one needs to, because if we don't decide that, then one video will be like this, the second video will be like this, the third video, and there'll be varying standards of quality. Okay. So we'll say, okay, this is good, this is bad, and then so, so which means we need to make our standards very clear. Okay. For example, um, like if you look at the books, uh, the publications, right? A uh, long time before it was decided that we're going to have only black and white. Okay, no color, uh, it's going to be black and white. Okay, so there were several reasons. One cost, uh, and then also it was a design by itself. It's something that stood out by itself, where it's black and white, uh, etc. And we also decided that the author picture will not be there. Okay, author's name will be there, but the author's, author's picture will not be there. Okay, so that was something that we decided. So these kind of things. Uh, We have to ask the author, but the author, <laughs> the authors decided that uh, the focus, the author should not be elevated. You know, it's not about the author's popularity or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that was it. Uh, so author had nothing wrong in other authors putting their pictures, but the fact is that uh, this was it. So, yeah. Mm, actually, there was a one funny instance where um, there's actually a Bible college student before he joined, actually. So we went to this um, conference 
so he met him and uh, he came and shook hands and said oh you are you know you are so and so i thought you'll be a very old person i read your books <laughs> and the way you read your i thought it was an old person but you are such a young man and uh, and then he joined the bible college after uh, you know that year so yeah you're right people can know but now anyway everybody you know on social media and everything people know i didn't try it but anyway so that was the thing um yeah so whatever standard it is you know uh, you just make it clear and it always helps and um, uh, of course i just i'm just repeating this um, you will learn more in depth um, in the church administration subject right um, more in detail about accounts and all those things but this is just a um, you know brief thing so the standards need to be documented okay so suppose i say it and i go you know i'm not there in that role anymore tomorrow the standards still need to be kept right so the best way to do it is to put it in writing document it upload it somewhere where someone else who comes in my place also knows that if this is the standard okay so we can easily refer and say hey, go through it this is the guideline this is the standard this is a specification and that's how we want it right so the person doesn't have to reinvent and you know waste time and all that so this is how it is okay okay then uh the second one is to have a proper system for approval of decisions okay one is first one is standard for decisions the second one is approval process okay um if it's going to be okay let's say we need to get coffee for a particular evening meeting here okay so who approves that does pastor ashish approve you will do you approach pastor ashish can we buy coffee okay so whom do you have uh, the administrator okay or or the bible college administrator right that's it or let's say you want to have uh, a particular meeting in the college so you know that okay these are people who can give us the approval okay right so you have a process in place saying for approval of let's say even purchases you know mainly those are the operational uh, decisions right uh every day you know money needs to be spent and so on so wh- wh- how can i do this um who needs to say okay to this so that i can do it right so you you choose or you set in place okay for approvals you check with this person for approvals of let's say 5000 rupees you check here this person or this manager this le- ministry leader can approve for purchases above 5000 and to 10000 someone else can do that for buying land and you know machinery and all that then it has to go to yeah the top person right so who needs to approve that right so you have a system in place then it make it becomes very you know very smooth the whole thing within the organization right so every time you don't have to check and think and spend a lot of time okay who needs to do this who needs to do that you know because you already kept in place okay then um when it comes to decision making uh, within the organization be open for discussions and inputs okay so so having a culture okay so you when you have this process it doesn't mean that it is set in stone it can always be flexible and change uh, maybe the scenario around is changing maybe the you know there are there are better pricing right so things like that are there so we can always discuss it share feedback and then arrive at a decision right so uh, this will always help uh, in preventing you know bad decisions or poor decisions right okay then as a leader one has to take responsibility for the decisions that are made okay so the ultimate um, responsibility leads with us or, or uh, stays with us as leaders now if we are responsible for leading a team and the team makes a mistake then we take ownership for it right and we say okay um whether good or bad we are we are the we, the onus is on us right the responsibility for that decision is all on us okay so i cannot just pass on the blame and say oh, he did it she did it and and so on so it's it's upon me okay okay um okay any questions here Okay, decision making approval process 
Okay, so these are things that you can put in place, right? And and you think about it. Okay, if you're, you know, if you have a if God has put in your heart a desire, you know, to start something like a, maybe it could be a school, orphanage, church, plant, uh, whatever it is. You know, you start thinking on those lines, right? Getting into those um, those those details as well, right? Okay, so creating and and um, nurturing kingdom culture. Okay, so what is culture? Okay, lifestyle. So why are we not wearing tie and uh, suit and tie and Francis and T-shirt and you know <laughs> a nice interesting T-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> so what is that? Why? See the first day. Some people would have come in Thai, right? Nikhil, you came in Thai, you know. No? Formal shoes, some, sometimes. And then though, during the orientation, they suddenly realize, hey, I think I'm overdressed. You know, look, <laughs> look at that that pastor who's speaking. He's like coming in a, you know, a shirt. He's taken off everything. Uh, and he's not tucked in a shirt. And he's coming in jeans. And, and then so you, suddenly you realize, OK, maybe hey, this is the, it's not, I didn't find it written anywhere but this is the culture you know this is the way of doing things this is their custom um, they're not leaving the shoes outside the classroom you know so you just realize that, okay this is the culture it's something unwritten okay so it's a custom it's uh, based on really beliefs and values and so on okay so so what is the kind of culture uh, that you want to see in your church or organization right so it, it takes time to develop the culture and one has to be intentional about the culture meaning that you reward every time you know uh, something is uh, um, the kind of culture that you want to see well it's happening but if something is happening that is not against the, sorry that is going against the kind of culture that you want you know maybe you want uh, you know, a culture where people are not gossiping. You want a culture where people are like nurturing one another, uh, and so on, right? So it has to be created, reiterated, just like the vision, right? So it needs to be created. It needs to be reiterated uh, over and over again, so that people understand this is what it is. But most important, you know, as a let's say a point of reference, as a leader, uh, I need to walk in it. Right. I need to walk in it. Um, otherwise, things can really fall apart very quickly. Right? Okay. So, um, so we can, we can look at um, you know the the kind of kingdom culture that we want, that we want. Okay. The what we see in the Word of God. This is the culture that we want. A culture that transcends all other culture. You know, the kingdom mindset and kingdom thinking, uh, etc. Uh, maybe you know in your church you want people to think. In terms of the kingdom of God, you know, they're not saying my church, your church, you know, we, our church is better, but they're thinking in terms of okay, this is God's kingdom that we are all serving. Like what we see in Corinthians, where Paul says, right, says, okay, I, you know, I sowed, somebody watered, but God gives the increase, and we are all co-workers with God, and to have that kingdom mindset, okay, so which means it 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 is there, you know, what you're sharing from the pulpit, how you're living your life. That you're not, you know, putting down other pastors or other churches, or you're not making fun of them. You're not, you know, constantly complaining about them, um, but you are actually, you know, creating that kind of a culture. So uh, the people also think in those terms, right? Okay. Okay. So we teach intentionally kingdom culture, and we need to know that, um, you know, I, I myself need to practice it. Okay. So I, I need to be the culture. That I want to see in people, okay, because we actually reproduce after our own kind, okay. Like Paul says to Timothy, be an example to the believers, and he lists out a lot of things, right? Word, conduct, love, spirit, faith, purity, okay. So um, that is something that we can do, okay. What is accepted? What is not accepted? You no, know, create. I mean, communicate that, okay. Um, like for example, I think with the worship team, we we you know we 
told them very early on that uh, if you are not practicing together as a team, then you don't get to play on a, on a Sunday morning. Right? You need to have practiced together or rehearsed together. And if you want to come to the rehearsal, you need to have individually practiced. Okay, you practice your instrument or you're singing whatever on your own and then you come together to have your rehearsal with the team and of course so if you're not doing that you know maybe there once you know there will be one emergency or you know something happened where the whole church is involved in doing something and we could not find but it cannot be repeated so if you're not doing that you know it's fine the bass player didn't come he couldn't make it it's okay let's go without it right so so you create a culture you communicate what is accepted what is not now there could be some exceptions here and there okay somebody genuine reason somebody gets stuck in traffic they're not able to come on time but we are over and over again we are emphasizing hey one needs to be on time okay like for example last sunday i was not scheduled to lead prayer at uh, south you know uh, unlike central all the other locations we have a time of prayer half an hour before the service starts so 8 to 8 30 is prayer time and then 8 30 worship okay so central because we have two services and we can't you know the team is practicing and so we don't have that so anyway so the, the uh, we have a roster of prayer leaders who will come and lead but i'm i'm there and then eight o'clock Prayer leader is not there. Eight one, prayer leader is not there. So eight two, I started. You know, I was not scheduled, and I was, I was scheduled to lead worship, but somebody had to do it, right? So he just started off and uh, thing. So um, okay, there was a genuine reason, but what we are saying is, if you are not here by eight one, you know, you will not be leading it. Okay, so uh, someone else will do it. You know. We cannot do it this way. So, and I remember this was not the, uh, you know, I remember the first time coming to APC South, I think, Jayanaga. The worship team was sitting aside. Why? The whole team came late. Okay. The whole team came late. Um, so, Pastor said, uh, no, you, it's okay. You just uh, sing, we'll, we'll start. So I think uh, I don't know who sang, and uh, and it was like that. So I'm just asking these guys, hey, why are you guys not playing? I was not part of the team then, so I'm just uh, you know I'm just, so one who's attending. So I'm looking at the drummer sitting there with the drumstick and everything. I said, why are you not playing? I'm saying no, we came late. Okay, so that's a very powerful message that is communicated, saying that hey, if you are not honoring the time, and um, you know, if there's no genuine reason or anything, then you cannot, right? So, so culture is set when we communicate, when there is acceptance of certain things, when there's non-acceptance of, um, you know, the standards, which you don't want to accept. Okay, so, so the thing is this, um, culture, when it is set, it's a good thing. But if it's uh, something, it's a negative culture, then it's a terrible thing, right? Um, if it is, and it's, it takes a lot to undo that negative culture. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, have you seen that picture that is there on the screen? You've seen that, okay. So it talks about the core values. Um, the, our, the inner circle talks about the theme, content, method, passion, goal. Okay, the outer circle talks about integrity, excellence, Etc. No, um, you know, pioneering relationships. So each of these words, um, they are okay. They are put there because they mean something. Because they are held in high esteem um, by everyone, you know, by the leadership, and you know, we. So that is why we call it the core values, right? So, and uh, uh, and it's it's good if you you know in your organization or team that you have you list down some core values uh, and they say okay these are things that are going to be of high value for us okay but as a church as a team these are going to be high value for us okay okay do away with what is contrary to the culture 
and uh, do not encourage any belief, values, or practice that they are contributing to a culture that you don't want to create, that you don't want to tolerate. Okay, um, affirm when things go right and lovingly correct when people do it wrong. Okay, we will always have exceptions. Uh, we will always have people who are not adhering to it for whatever reason. Find out and and uh, try to help. Right, uh, help them. Okay. Um, shall we stop here? Okay, uh, let me just quickly make some comments here about um, you know a culture, a community culture that we um, uh, that's adapted from the House of God book publication. Okay, so it talks about uh, the early church in Jerusalem. Um, right after it was uh, out, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and it was formed and so on. So some observations there, right? Um, so a community doesn't mean that people are just getting together and they like each other and they, you know, they want to hang out with each other and, uh, and okay, you know, is that a, is that a community that, that is a, is that a kingdom community? Right? Or uh, is that the kind of culture that you want? Um, the thing is this: uh, in a community of believers, right, we are saying that they are relating to each other in a manner where the Lord is at the center of it all. There is always this awareness that I esteem the Lord, I esteem the Word, I esteem the things of God, um, and I put it at, on a, at a high place. Right. So, so that is something that is common. To that group of people uh, coming together, okay. Um, spiritual nurture, growth um, in spiritual things. You know, these are communicated, emphasized. Okay. So, what are we looking at? We're looking at see some of these observations from the church in Jerusalem. Okay, it talks about you know Acts chapter two, right? Forty-four. It talks about okay, people were together, people had things in common, etc. Um, and the other things that we observe are these. Right, and this is all. This is very important, and it needs to be there in a community of believers. Right? Okay, we'll continue with this uh, next class. We'll stop right here.